Happy Sunday evening. Hope you guys are having an incredible, incredible weekend. Hope you're getting some rest. Hope you're getting to think about your business. Hope you're ready to blow up this week. I've got a fun topic this week. This is a good one. This was brought to me by one of my good buddies. And Tommy Mack, if you're joining this, man, make sure you watch this back. Because what I'm what, I, what we're going to talk about is, and I'm going to read it to kind, to kind of set this up. I have an agent that I, what's up, Vince? What's up, Dave? I have, a, uh, I have an agent that I talk to that lives out in uh, Virginia, the big state of Virginia. And we talk, we talk quite a bit. You know, we text every once in a while. And he said, hey, what's the topic for the, you know, live Q&A tomorrow night? And I said, well, dude, what do you want it to be? We, we were texting last night. And this agent, he's been an insurance agent for quite a while. He said, I could benefit. I won't use his name. But he said, hey, I could benefit about how to handle the mindset in this business, being able to work through droughts when you question your ability and feel like you will never write another app again, even though you know it's not true. And we 100% know it's not true, but we all go through it. Got my cowboy cup. Vince, go boys. We've all, we've all got things that happen in our life. That, that, that challenge us mentally, that determine whether we stay mentally tough or not. So you, the insurance agent that's out there thinking, dude, I am never going to ride an app ever again. I'm in a drought. I'm struggling. I'm getting challenged from all. I mean, because you can get challenged personally. You can get challenged in your relationship. You can get challenged financially. You can get challenged at your job. You can get challenged at work by your friends, by your family, with your faith, whatever. Everyone gets challenged in different ways. Some people, some people get challenged from every single direction all at once. And it feels like, dude, I don't know what to do. It's tough. I'm struggling. And so I want to relate this to insurance agents tonight because insurance agents are a perfect example of the types of people that have to be mentally tough. What's up, Austin? As an insurance agent. You have to be mentally tough. I think that's one of the biggest reasons people fail is we get complacent or we give up when times get tough. As an insurance agent, you will have bad weeks. You stay tough by listening to Cody and Grant every morning. Thank you, Austin. Appreciate that, brother. Please, please share this out, man. That's one of the biggest things that, that, I, that, I, can, that I can relate and give is I didn't always have great days. I didn't always have great weeks and I still even today don't have the best of months every single month. But what I do know is if I give up, if I give in, if I let all of these problems that are facing me get in the way of me being successful, it'll affect me and it'll affect you from being mentally tough and from absolutely kicking butt and taking names. That's one of the biggest things you can be. That's why I believe Vince, North Star Insurance Advisors, he'll be at the 8% Nation Insurance Conference. I believe he answered the question in our Secure Agent Mentor group on Facebook. I put a, I put a, I put a question on our Secure Agent Mentor group um, probably a month or two ago about, hey, what's the most important quality as an insurance agent? And I think he may have said it was either enthusiasm or confidence. A lot of people, a lot of salespeople, I was eating sunflower seeds earlier, and then my mouth is just super dry. A lot of salespeople struggle with staying mentally tough and having confidence in yourself. Now, personally, I've never lacked confidence, but I've also been too overly confident as well. Um, if you don't believe that you're going to get out of this drought, get out of this hump, be able to overcome it, continuing, pushing and, and, and know that you are going to make it out of it, then you never will. And so confidence and believing in yourself is the most important part. What's up, Dale, out in, uh, out in Cape Girardeau, Missouri? What's up, brother? Being mentally tough, having confidence in your ability, and determining that no matter what, you are going to make it out of it and dominate that's how you stick. That's how you stick to your guns. 
That's how you stay positive. That's how you do not give up and you do whatever it takes. Tiffany on YouTube says, hey, this was me all last week. Had me so depressed. I felt like I was losing my touch, even though I've always killed it in sales. This video is right on time. Thanks, Tiffany. Appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. That, that, that's, you know what? That's one of the reasons I'm doing this video is last week was the toughest week I've ever had professionally. And I can say that because there was just a lot of things going on in my life, in my business, a lot of things going on in general. But I know that, hey, I've got confidence in my ability. Tiffany's got confidence in her ability there on YouTube. She believes that she's going to make it out of it. She's always used to doing well. But when she doesn't, what's up, John? But when she doesn't do well, she knows that, hey, she's got confidence in her ability to be able to make it out, to stay positive. And so what's up, Chase? And so everyone gets it. Life is nuts, man. And when those things happen, how, what are some things I want to hear from you guys on YouTube and Facebook? What are some things that, what's up, Lawrence? Appreciate you, brother. What are, what are some things that you guys use when times are tough, when you're struggling, when you're going, when you're feeling depressed, when you're feeling down, when you're feeling bothered, when you're feeling like you are, what's up, Scott? When you're feeling like, hey, Dude, I'm never going to be able to make it out of this. I'm never going to have a better, I'm never going to have a good week ever again. When you're feeling down on yourself, when you're struggling, when you're having a bad week, when you know that you need that you need to be strong to overcome it. What's up, brother? When you know, what's up, Boca Trino on YouTube? When you know that you're fighting it, when you know that you are struggling, <laughs> I don't think that's the answer, but thanks for commenting. You want to check out the comment, you got to go to Facebook. I can't say that one out loud. I uh, probably could, but uh, what do you mean? What do you do when you're having a rough patch? How do you get out of it? What's up, babe? Yeah, um, everyone's different. Everyone has those times where you're going through, what's up, Miles? Everyone's going to go through a rough patch in sales, in the insurance business. Everyone is going to go through a rough patch. The individuals that stay focused on the task at hand, what's up, Brian? The individuals that stay focused on their why, what they're looking to accomplish, what they are going to do to succeed, what they are going to do to fight out of the tough patch that they're going through. Those individuals that stay focused, dude, I learned a lot. I watched, I watched, uh, I watched Tiger Woods, you know, Adam Scott and, and, and Brooks Kepka in the uh, PGA championship this afternoon. Those guys, they had some awesome shots and they had some horrible shots. They had some bad holes. When those things happened, they've got to put it out of their mind and move on to the next, the, 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 the next swing, the next stroke, the next day, the next week, the next month. Everyone is going to go through a rough patch in your life. Everyone is going to be tested mentally. You're, there's going to be times where you're going to wake up and not believe in yourself. There's going to be time. What's up, Hannah? I'm a new. I'm a new. I, 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 I am new. I'm a new agent. Great topic to keep things real in this business. Thank, th thank you, Hannah. Appreciate that. Thanks for being a subscriber. Thanks for watching our stuff. Everyone is going to go through tough stuff. I love to listen to Inky Johnson. He talks about falling off the process, not the product. I love that, Scott. Thanks for sharing that on on, on Facebook. Yeah, dude, Inky Johnson, dude. The dude's been through a lot. What we gotta remember is most people go through, most people, most people go through a lot more than we ever dream of going through. If we can stay the course, dude, we're gonna be better people for it. Dave says sometimes we freeze, but to take the next step forward, completely, completely agree. It, it's but at the same time, sometimes it's tough to take the next step forward because we're struggling on what's going on. Lawrence says, hey, a rough patch happens everywhere. Not just in insurance. I'm a big sports fan. So I focus on how to be like them in their profession. Studying and trying to have a sense of humor. It's the only thing we can do. Sometimes that'll get us that'll, that'll get us out of it. Because we are all going to, going to go. Man, we've already we've already almost been on 10 minutes. Everyone is going to go through tough things in their life. The things that I do is I realize how good I have it. I go write down my goals. I realize the people in my life that are on my team, that care, that are pushing me, that are challenging me. If you don't have people in your life that are simply making you better by you being around them, 
then you need to find some new people. I'm pushing on it, and I lean on, lean on God for all of them. Absolutely, absolutely a good thing to do. Uh, oh, and three, trying to make myself laugh again. I like it, man. Uh, Scott and Lawrence, thanks for all the comments on Facebook. Uh, we are all going to go through tough patches. It's what, it's how we get through those that will challenge us and that will tell the world the type of person that we are. Do, when times get tough, do you write down your goals? Do you go work out to, to, to relieve some stress? Do you think the people around you? Do you, do, do, do you go to a place of gratitude and think about all the amazing, awesome things that you have in your life? I'm one of the luckiest 28 year olds in the world. I don't have nothing to be to be sad about. But I know that everyone goes through times of being mentally tough. I know this, if you're not going through things that that challenge you or that push you, I'm going to I'm going to be transparent on video. This conference, this Apres Nation Insurance Conference is challenging me and pushing me harder than I've ever been pushed in my entire life. So I know that it's the right thing to do. So I know that it's going to challenge me and make me a better person as it will you by being there. Everyone has a different way that they get out of the rough patch, that they overcome the mental stuff. What's up, Jason? As you guys join on Facebook, please click share and share this thing out. I've already shared it personally as Cody Askins and into our Secure Agent Mentor group. Keep the thumbs up coming on YouTube. I appreciate all the comments and questions. We're in the best business and the best opportunity available. There are more millionaires in the financial services and insurance industry than any other industry in the world. We are 100% in the right space. Dale says, hey, you got to get tougher on yourself. You work longer hours, stay out later at night, just see more people. It's all about knows and trusting God. He will provide it. I give it my all. I love it, Dale. Dude, you do, brother. I've learned a lot from you and, and your team and Joe and the cool people that are out in uh, Southeast Missouri, the Boot Hill. So thanks for being on, man. Um, everyone, everyone, everyone handles things differently, but it's also going to happen to everyone. When it happens to you, how are you going to respond? Maybe you're going through right now. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is a tough patch, a rough patch in your life and you're going through it right now. How are you responding at the moment? How are you getting back up when you're knocked down time and time again? Maybe you're a new agent and you're really struggling to get to get rolling. Maybe, maybe you've never had a, a one, one, two, three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollar a week. Maybe you're struggling as an agent. Maybe because it's tough to get in front of people. When someone tells you no, when someone tells you not, they're not interested, do you let those things affect you and do you give up? This can be a, uh, there can be a lot of rejection associated with this business. You're going to get rejected a lot. The more used to you, the, the more used to rejection that you get, the better salesperson you will be. The more knows you hear, the more skill you generally end up having. I love Napoleon Hill. Think and grow rich. That's one of the ways that you guys can can can, can fight through the tough patch, is by thinking, planning, planning out what you want to accomplish, when you want to accomplish it. That's one of the things that keeps me on. I mean. Because there's times where I go to bed and I'm like, okay, did I do enough last night yeah. or, or, or today? Did I do enough today? And sometimes it's yes. Sometimes it's no. I could I can normally do more though, right? We can always generally always do more. Sometimes I'll have bad days. And at the end of the day, I'm like, man, dude, what is wrong with me? You know, it, it, why am I not working harder? Why is it, why is certain things in my life not going better? And so we all have those moments of mental weakness where we, when we, where we may not 100% believe in ourselves, but I know that some day, some nights are the net, or maybe maybe one night I'm, I'm, I'm upset at myself, and then the next morning I'm like, dude, you're the greatest salesperson in the world, right? So there's these, there's these times of weakness and times of overconfidence. I would rather have the latter every single day. Lawrence says, Hey, well, Cody, what do you say when you get like 10 appointments and nine say no, or I'm not interested. And they just keep saying it. Um, dude, I just keep pushing. You know, I ignore it. I've got to the point where I believe, I, I believe so strongly and so firm that everyone's going to say yes on the very time I meet them. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And if they're saying, I, I know one thing, if I run 10 appointments and nine of them say no, I'm going to look internally 
Because at that point, it's an internal problem that I'm having. It's not them. We can blame them, but it's really not. With every adversity lies a seed of equal or greater benefit. I love that, Scott. Thank you, buddy. Find the good in it all. It's there if you search. 100%. That's a great way to put it. There's positives and negatives in every situation. Some people only see the negatives. Some people are naturally negative. Humans are, believe it or not, us as humans, we are naturally very negative people. We can choose to be negative or we can choose to be positive. We're all naturally negative, but we can try to fight and be positive because we know that we need to be. Dave says, hey, when I go through a tough patch, I know that a great breakthrough is on the horizon. I'm in the right place, on the right path. When I'm being tested, when my strength is being tested, he knows that he's on the right path. And if you think about it, every rough patch you've ever had in your life, everything you ever struggled with, the bad days when you ran 10 appointments and nine people said no, when you made 30 calls, you talked to 16 people and everyone told you to get lost. When you door knock 60 homes and nobody lets you, let, let you in their door. When you ask four people to buy consecutive homes, four, five, six people in a row, and you run four, five, six appointments and you go through your presentation and you ask them to buy and they don't. Generally, something positive and good is right on the other side of what you're going through. But the first step is remembering that, hey, all I have to do is keep pushing. The way I think about it is, uh, I don't know what, why that just came to mind. I always think of like a big, a big, a big, a uh, big cornfield or, or, you know, and, and you're running through the cornfield. You have no clue where you're at. You seem like you're lost. It's just, there's just, there's just corn everywhere. You look forward, backward, jump up and down. All you see is corn. And you could get, you could be one foot from getting out of that rough patch. But you could give up and turn around and have to trek all the way back when we didn't realize, hey, we were this close to something good. There's a there's a meme or a picture on Facebook that's, that goes around of this guy with an axe and he's fighting through this tunnel and there's a wall and just on the other side of the wall, he gets out of the tunnel, but he doesn't know where he's at in the tunnel. And when he gets to the end, he could put the axe on his shoulder and go back out of it and give up or he can take one more swing and actually break through the wall and get through the rough patch. I think we're all we're all at that point sometimes where if you think about it, every like Dave said, every rough patch you've ever been in, there's always been something good right on the other side of it. As is, as insurance agents, remember why you do what you do. Everybody has a different why. Everyone does this for a different reason. Why do you do it? Everyone's in this business. Some people are in this business to help people. Some people are in this business to, you know, because they saw what leaving a financial burden on a family can do. Maybe, maybe it was one. Maybe it was. Maybe that happened in your family, and you're like, dude, I'm going to become, I'm, I'm going to become a uh, insurance agent. And make sure that didn't happen to any other families like it did yours. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe you're in it for the money. That's okay. Maybe you're in it because uh, it won't last. You need, you need a bigger why, but. Maybe you're in it because uh, you've got a family and kids and you're fighting for them. Well, think about them when you're when you're going through a rough patch. Think about your family. Think about the fact that, hey, if, if I give up, I'm I'm on not only letting me down, dude, I'm letting them down, too. And I know you don't want to let them down. They said I used to work with a guy that always said, don't stop five minutes before the miracle. That's good. I got I got goosebumps here in that one. We never know when we're about to hit our breakthrough, when we're about to hit our launch pad, when we're about to walk into that $1,000 a month sale. We never know what week. Quick story. My biggest final expense sale ever was about 510, around $510 a month. I think it was 505 and change. And it was on a Saturday. Now this appointment was one that I had set from a lead. This appointment it was on a Saturday morning at like 10 o'clock and it was about an hour and 45 minutes away from home. And I only had one appointment, which I hate to do that. Right. As you guys probably do, too. Well, I had another agent with me. And if it wouldn't been for the other agent, I probably I don't know if I would went, but because I 
because if it's almost two hours, if it's over an hour, 45 minutes, even though I, sh I know I shouldn't do it, sometimes, sometimes I would call ahead. We're all human. And so I would call, I called ahead, no answer. It's about 8, about 8, 8 a.m., 7.45, 8 a.m., about to leave the office in, in Springfield. The appointment was up north of Joplin somewhere, $505 a month. And I, and I, w another thing is I had booked it like four days in advance, which is also another big no-no of mine. So everything's stacking against the odds here. I almost didn't go, but I thought, you know what? The other agent was positive. I, I was trying to be positive. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to stop five minutes before my miracle. What if this is the, what if she's there? What if this is a great appointment? I'm not doing anything on Saturday morning anyway. Let's just go. Let's make the drive. Let's take the leap. If I wouldn't have went, I would have missed out on six, seven, eight grand of commission. All because I didn't want to make an hour and 45 minute drive. I hear insurance agents complain about how far leads are. Oh, this leads 35 miles away. This one's 60 miles away. Are you kidding me? This one's two hours away. It depends on how bad you want it. I've been four hours for sales before. I've been five hours for sales before. You guys may say that's stupid and dumb. Dude, I didn't want to stop five minutes before my miracle. If someone, it's hard enough. We've got to remember in this business, it's hard enough to get in front of someone. So if you're in front of them, let's make the most of it. Let's make the best. of it. The one, number one reason agents fail and the number one thing agents struggle with is what? It's getting in front of people. So when you got an opportunity to get in front of people, get in front of them. I don't care if they stand you up. I don't care if it's two and a half hours from home. I don't care if you're not hitting on all cylinders. I don't care if you've had a bad day. I don't care if you want to, don't want to spend the gas money. I don't care if you've had a bad week and the last six moments have told you no, and you know this one's going to tell you no because you've sucked. I don't care what the obstacle is that is in your way. Fight through it. Keep on going. Make the drive. Ask one more time. Make one more call because you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family, and you owe it to your future self that you don't want to give up on. This business is so difficult. We're so close to giving up all the time. Don't give up. Tax Pro, 8%. It's, it's going to be there. You're going to have to be there as well. There's a lot of agents that need tax helps, you know, with all the money they're making. So you need to be there. Brad says, what's up, Brad? Brad says, my screensaver reads, to persevere, patient endurance of hardship, persisting in a state of enterprise in spite of difficulties and discouragement. Brad, I love that. Matt also says, good. Thanks for coming, buddy. Matt, Matt Schmidt says, good stuff. Never know when the next yes will come. Dude, you are 100% right. All the time, agents skip appointments and don't go because they're too far away or they're afraid they won't be there. They couldn't get a hold of them first. Or they call the lead and they pre-qualify them, engage their interest. Dude, I don't care what lead you call and you, you start asking date of birth and you start asking health questions and you start pre-qualifying them and quoting them, engaging their interest. That lead is going to be an absolute lay down if they allow you to go because most leads are going to give you objections and not mean it because it's human nature. But agents all the time, they give up. They don't make the extra call or when they do, they expect a no, or they expect someone to stand them up, or they expect for bad things to happen. What's up, Tate? Tax Pro on YouTube. What's up, James? Tax Pro on YouTube to say, Cody. Do you say tough if you are struggling setting appointments? Oh, how do you how do you stay stay tough? Um, I see what you're saying. Um, here's what you do. Here's what you do. Number one, make another call. But if you're struggling to set appointments, that means that I'm generally not enthusiastic. I'm normally not genuine, or maybe I'm rushing the call. Maybe I'm not listening, or maybe I'm giving up too early in the call and not overcoming two, three, four objections. Um, something that can help a lot of agents is to record your calls so that you can listen back to how you sound, what you're saying, what you're doing, 
because we can always be just a little bit better. Am I right? Thanks for the question, Tax Pro. Great question, buddy. Uh, Scott on Facebook says, hey, I love when you go to an appointment and you don't feel like you got much. Then when you figure out that you got a honey pot deal, 100%. It happens all the time where you're like, you roll up to the home and you're like, ugh. Okay, I got, I got another story. I got a good one now, though. I've got an agent office um, that almost did not, that went to an appointment at night. And he showed, this has been years ago, and he showed up. What's up, Craig? This agent in my office called a lead, set an appointment, showed up at the house. It, it was a trailer. It was, it was uh, there were signs, crazy signs, dogs. It was late at night. It was dark. So the agent, what's up, Ryan? So the agent turned around and went home. Didn't stay. Didn't. And so that agent gave up on that appointment because because of him judging the book by its cover. It was a trailer. It was, you know, it was dogs. It was dark. It looked, looked nasty. There was 17 cars, whatever. That agent didn't stay for that appointment. He said, now I'm, he, he said, he said, I'm not staying for this. So he left. What's hilarious is that couple called back, called, called into our office and said, Hey, dude, someone was supposed to come see me. They pulled up and they didn't stay. Like they left. The manager at the time, this has been years ago, the manager at the time gave the lead to somebody else. That agent went out and ended up selling a couple whole lives, a couple children's whole lives, a couple Medicare policies. I don't know. It was, it was a lot. Never judge a book by its cover because you never know when you are that close to hearing another yes. We're all used to hearing no's. If you're just jumping on Facebook, please share this thing out. If you're on YouTube, Tommy Mack is in the house. I appreciate you covering the topic. Very helpful. This will help reset the mindset for this coming week. Tommy Mack inspired this mentally tough topic uh, from Virginia. Tommy texted me and said, hey, buddy, I could benefit about how to handle the mindset in this business, being able to work through the droughts when you question your ability and feel like you may never write another app again, even though you know it's not true. Everyone, Ryan, I need to talk to you about, about getting involved in the conference, maybe, maybe even speaking as a marketing expert, brother. Um, so let, let's touch base this week. Everyone struggles with giving up when you're going through a doubt, when you're going through a drought, why is the first thing we do is we give up on, our, on us. We give up on our ability and we start to question we start, we start to have a lack of confidence. We start to question our ability. Why is it that happened? But everyone does it. Everyone struggles. Let's do it, brother. Everyone, so thank you for the comment on YouTube. I'm talking back. Everyone struggles with that. 92% of insurance agents fail because they give up way too soon. Things don't go their way. And they think, ah, crap, it's the leads, man. Dude, it's the leads. I'm having a horrible week. It's the leads' fault. These prospects are horrible. This area sucks, right? Have you ever heard that? Managers, agents, that the area you're in, it's the area, right? Everyone has a different mindset. 92% of agents fail because they give up, as Dave said earlier, five minutes before their miracle. Or they start hearing no's. And they start making excuses for every sink, Scott. Appreciate your brother. Tax Pro on YouTube. I appreciate you covering the topic. Uh, Cody, okay, sorry. Cody, I've never seen you down, bro. How do you keep the energy so consistent? Coffee, high belief in self, nonstop practice. Uh, that's a good question. Now, because even if I am down on myself, which trust me, dude, dude, it happens to me all the time too. I'm human. I'm like everybody else. I stay up because. The biggest reason why is I write down my goals every single morning, even, even when I'm not up. Dude, I can't ever let you guys see it because you're struggling enough. You guys are probably struggling more than me. You're probably – your life may be tougher than me. Someone else, is, someone else may, may be going through absolute crap in their life. Who am I to get, you know, de depressed and start getting sad and start start making excuses and, you know, have a lack of confidence? The biggest thing is I remember who I'm doing this for. 
because I believe that I'm going to help a lot of insurance agent. In in, in, I'm going to help a lot of insurance agents in my life, and I'm committed to freaking helping agents. I believe it or not, I am. Do I want to make a buck along the way? Who doesn't? I'd be an idiot. You know, I'd be lying if I didn't say that. But I remember what my mission is. I remember that, dude. I'm my ability is up there. My ability is ridiculous. I, I, I remain confident in myself. I've never lacked confidence, but by writing down my goals, it allows me to stay consistent. So thanks for, thanks for asking. That's a great, great question. Rolando on uh, YouTube. Diamonds are only formed under pressure. The harder the fight, the greater the victory. 100%. Dude, you hear about, you hear about people that are successful all the time. And one of the biggest things you hear is, Hey, they were, uh, they, they, you hear some of the most successful people in the world go through like seven bankruptcies, you know, that's just, that's just nuts. That's one of the reasons why people are successful. They just never give up. I see industry veterans that have no skill. They've been in the business 25, 30 years, They're making a quarter million dollars a year simply because they never give up. I'm not saying to be, to, 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 to just, just barely get by and to not give it your all and to not believe in yourself. But everyone's going to give up. Burry, what's up, brother? I stayed and sold a lady who had 17 cats, and I'm allergic to cats. I've heard every excuse and seen many who have quit. Like golf, it's the next shot. Goals every week, you just have to grind it out. I love it, Burry. Burry is a Medicare agent in our area in southwest Missouri that steals all of our Medicare business. No, he's a good dude, man. He, he's he's a uh, that's right, Ryan. Closers never quit, man. You guys are gonna hear no's. There's gonna be tough. You're one step away from being a diamond in this industry. Most people, as Dave said earlier, I love that. I'm gonna say it again. Most people give up five minutes before their miracle. Like that old. Uh, you, know, you guys have probably seen that meme or that picture on Facebook I was referencing earlier about the guy, the guy with the axe, the little man with the axe going through the tunnel. And now he's about to break through the tunnel, but he quits, puts the axe on his shoulder and turns around and hikes, hikes, hikes tail back home. I feel like a lot of agents are so close. I hear agents that blame leads. They make excuses. They hear no's and not interested in objections. And they, they, they see obstacles, right, of this leads 54 miles away. This leads two and a half hours away. This leads not in my city. This lead, you know. That's or they say it's a wrong number. They may be lying. You don't door knock it. That's why 92% of insurance agents fail because we all have these little things that happen, these obstacles that we do not fight through to overcome because closers never quit. What other questions can I help answer? If you're jumping in on Facebook, please share this thing out. If you're on YouTube, keep the comments and questions coming. We got a we always have a couple dozen on youtube i appreciate all the live watchers on youtube on facebook thank you guys you guys are awesome what other questions do you guys have um please share this thing out and keep the comments question what's up tony what are the questions do you guys have about uh what are some things you guys struggle with we've been going about 33 minutes we for those of you that are just not joining we do this every single sunday night at about 7 38 o'clock um i go anywhere from 30 minutes to 90 minutes with a live q a Facebook, live on Facebook and YouTube every single Sunday night. I love doing it. You guys challenge me more than I even challenge myself. Uh, tax process. Cody, quick question about final expense. What problem can we show them we are solving so it doesn't look like a product sell? I'm taking detailed notes, sir. Uh, the biggest thing is, is the relationship there? If you're not genuine and you're not focused on building a relationship with your prospect, they're going to sense it. They're going to feel it. And dude, if you're just there to make the sell and they can sense it, you're not going to get the sell. So at the end of the day, you've got to focus. You've got to put the sell aside. You've got to put price aside. You're not selling a, pr a price. You're not even selling a product most of the time. You're selling the relationship you and the value of what you have to offer and how it can benefit them. Once we realize that as, as agents and the relationship is freaking there and it's rock solid, and once we realize that we've got to take our time and deliver value, dude, it's 100% possible to make the sale because 
we were never trying to make the sale. Thanks, Tax Pro. Great question on YouTube. Um, also, I got some about my final expense sales presentation about my five about my my four four step appointment process: the warm up, the fact find, the presentation, uh, and close, and the cool down, wrap up, and cool down. In the in the presentation, I give five detailed benefits of the types of policies that we sell. If you're just now joining on Facebook, please click share and share this thing out. I, I, I talk about the five benefits of the types of policies that we sell. And I go through each benefit in detail, whole life. Okay. If you're selling term coverage lock, right? Price lock, uh, double accident builds cash value and a local agent. They can be whatever you want, but you need five benefits. A price lock always need to be in there. You need to finish with local agent and harp on how important, important having a local agent is. But as I go through each of those, I start off with, hey, Miss Betty, I've got five. There's five things that all my clients, everybody I visit with, they rave and they love about what I have to offer. Is it okay if I share that with you? I'd love to share that with you real quick if that's cool. They're not going to say no. Perfect. So I roll through each benefit. And after each benefit, so I'll say, hey, the types of policies that we sell, they come with a price lock and our clients love this benefit, the price lock, because the price is permanently locked in. It'll never change. There's a lot of things out in the marketplace that, that where the price goes up at age 70, 75, 80. And I know that just because you can afford something today doesn't mean you can afford an increase later down the road. My clients love the price lock. Do you, Betty, do you agree with me? Do you like that? Is the price lock also important to you? And so by doing that, I go over the five benefits and I, I, I get, I ask them if it's important to them. And it's, it's a way of, of, of being a trial close after each and every benefit. And then after I've went through all five benefits in detail and gotten responses and acknowledgement for every benefit, then I ask of these five, you see, you, you guys see what I'm doing here. I'm getting them to make a decision of, uh, get, I'm getting them used to making a decisions before I give them rates of these five. Miss Betty, which of these do you like the most? Do you like the most? If they say, "Well, I don't know," well, Betty, if you had to choose, which one would you say? You know, you, you seem to like the price lock. You seem to like local agent. If you had to choose, Betty, which one would you say you like the most? Because they're going to say, "I don't know." If you ask people questions, they don't want to answer. If they say, "What? I don't know," and you guys give up, okay. But hypothetically, if you had to choose, and they're going to choose, which of these would you say? What's up, Ken? Which one? Which which of these would you say? Hey, you know what? I like this the most. Um, and they're going to say, a lot of times they're going to say, well, probably the price lock, probably the local agent, maybe that it's whole life, get them to choose one, then move on in the present in, into, into giving options, three options, descending order. Once I've, once the relationship's there, once the value's there, and once I've got them making a decision on a regular occurrence and the fact that I expect everyone to make a decision on the very first appointment. They're going to choose and they're going to make it. A, they're, they're going to make a decision and I'm going to end up being their agent for life because of the relationship and the fact that I got them to make a decision on the first one. Courtney, advice how to transition into life insurance full time. Um, look at your schedule. I, when I was 19, I was very fortunate. I talk about this all the time. I was very fortunate to make one hundred and seventeen thousand three hundred and sixty one dollars and 13 cents. Nineteen years old in college playing basketball. I was very fortunate to be able to jump out to a fast start. And you could say I was part time. I had classes in the mornings. I had practice in the afternoons. I had games in evenings and weekends. I had to go to tournaments. I had to drive to Colorado and Texas and Kansas and, you know, Arkansas and over to Oklahoma. And so I was part time. But what I did is I'm like, okay, I know for me to make 100K, I had to sit and ask 10 people to buy every single week. So, how do I do that? I focused on, I had a call night. I would bring in college kids. We would cold call. We'd set appointments. This was eight years ago and over eight years ago. And so we did that and I would walk out of there with 12, 15, 20 appointments from like a two or three hour cold calling session. They weren't great, but I knew I didn't have a lot of time. I was part time, but I knew I needed to do this full. I want to, I want to do this full time, but Hey, I was in college playing basketball as a student athlete. Um, Focus on seeing people. Set a goal for yourself, Courtney, because eventually, if you can get, if you can consistently see five people a week, then you can, you can consistently see ten. It's not like it's harder; it's just a different system. 
and it, it takes a little more work. And so focus on, hey, see, seeing five people every single week. Say, hey, Courtney, I'm going to sit and I, I'm going to I'm going to physically go and sit with and ask five people to buy every single week. And pretty soon, if you can consistently do that, you'll be full time before you know it. Because if you, you can see five, you can see 10. And if you can see five, you'll probably sell a few and you know make an extra grand, 15, 1500 bucks, two grand a week. And before you know it, whatever job you're doing on the side, you will have quit. Uh, Bo, I mean, some people would say, hey, just suck it up and jump and just take the leap and burn the bridge. Not everybody's comfortable to do that. So that's my, that's my, that's my answer. Um, Bo says, sounds great, Cody. Price lock is a great benefit. Dude, totally. Uh, John on YouTube says, hey, if you're joining in on this too, please share this thing out. Uh, John on YouTube says, I, I recently had to literally knock a woman's door down on a door knock. If I hadn't, she wouldn't have heard me and I would have lost selling five apps to her family. Wow. Dude, that is a great, great, great example because, okay, that's a perfect example. When we make a call and someone doesn't answer, what do we think? Oh, what's up, Travis? Oh, oh, they, oh, oh, you know, when we make a call and they don't answer the phone, we're negative. So we think, hey, they don't want to talk to me. They're dodging my call. Or when we door knock on a home and they don't come to the door, we think, oh, they're not home or they're hiding from me. We don't realize that, hey, they may be, they may be at home. Maybe maybe they were in the shower. What's up, Heather? But for whatever reason, they, they don't hear us. Don't assume negative. Like John just said on YouTube, don't give up. Do whatever it takes. Assume positively that they're in the house and that he's going to knock the door down until they come to the door. Don't instantly assume the negative. Don't instantly assume that it's a two-hour drive like I did back when I was in my early 20s and, and assume that, hey, they're not going to be there. This is a waste of wasted drive and really stupid. Back a few years back when I sold a $510 a month final expense policy, it was a Saturday morning. It was two hours away. I almost gave up and didn't go. Well, it's a good thing I was mentally tough and positive and, and freaking went or I, would, I wouldn't have that story today. Uh, same thing with you guys in your business. Tax Pro, that five benefit closes fire. Thanks, Cody. You're welcome, brother. Um, it's just a way to build value. Everyone does it differently. There's no perfect way to run an insurance appointment. Um, but without the relationship, it's going to be very difficult. She was in the back of the house sleeping. Exactly. You never know what's going on in their life or in your life. All you can control is what you do, how often you do it, and the fact that you do not give up doing it. Please share this thing out on Facebook. We just now joined and please click share. If you're on YouTube, keep the thumbs up coming. We'll be going about 43 minutes. What other questions do you guys have? I appreciate all you guys joining. You guys make the Sunday Sunday live Q&A a blast. We've been doing this. Well, what we've been doing this five or six weeks now. Um, it's a lot of fun. We do a couple things that are pretty unique in, the, in, in, in this business. We do live Q&As on Sunday night. Um, you don't see that a lot. And then we also do live. We, we have four other live insurance shows every single week in our studio. Monday's Brain Power. Tuesday's is live cold calling. I actually cold call live. Kind of weird. Um, Wednesday's is deal breakers. And they give me a day off on Thursday. Not really, but we don't do a live show. And then Fridays, we do 8% uh, Club. Um, Lauren, Dave, and Dallas are on those other shows with me. Um, we have a lot of fun. We, we focus on bringing value to insurance agents in a fun, modern way, just like Ryan, who's, who's been watching on Facebook, same way he does, man. He tries to bring a modern spin. I don't know the guy very well, but I've seen some of his stuff online. Um, it's just it's just all about bringing value to people, doing it in a unique way, um, trying to be transparent, trying to help people, trying to be the young hipster that does it. Is your company still doing final expense leads, digital final expense leads? Course up, Courtney. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we help about we helped about um, just under. It was a little over 900 agents last month uh, with our final expense with our with our leads. They weren't all final expense. I would say majority were final expense probably. Um, so yeah, we help a lot of agents across the country, a ton of agents in Texas, California, Florida, all over the East Coast, all over the West Coast, all over the Midwest, um, Utah, ton of agents in Utah. Where is that? Um, yeah, we, we help a lot of agents with, with our leads. And so that's just, that's my way of, 
Um, leads, never planned on doing leads. My, my nose is itching like crazy, by the way. Uh, I never plan on doing leads. You guys ask me like, hey, what do you use, use for leads? Can we buy leads from you? And I'm like, yeah, I guess. And now we do leads and we do a lot of them. Uh, probably probably 20,000 a month. Um, John, she was in the back house sleeping. Joyce, do you have to be a part of your group for the weekday calls? No, you do not. You can watch live on YouTube and Facebook. I don't promote our agency at all on any of my secure agent mentor stuff. I just don't. Um, I don't believe in mixing businesses. I've got four different insurance based companies. Some do better than others. A uh, small call center, um, an agency that'll do about 4,000 life apps this year. Um, the, the secure agent mentor, obviously with leads and training and coaching and then 8% nation, the newest one with the conference. Uh, I will not make any money from the conference this year. I can hundred percent promise you, but I'm not in it for that. I'm, I'm in it to get some attention and, and bring value to agents, help a lot of people and bring a modern spin to the insurance business. The six figure you made was that when you were cold calling, knocking and made 35 K. Uh, I don't know what part you're referencing, Ken, uh, on Facebook, buddy. Um, I've always, um, I've, I've been very fortunate. Um, I've always found a way to make six figures. And so I've always, uh, I've always made six figures in this business. Um, Utah in the house. What's up, Steven? Dude, we, we get a lot of Utah orders, man. It's crazy how many Salt Lake City agents there are. Ryan, uh, what's up, man? What company is your favorite? Don't say all of them, LOL. Uh, if we're looking at insurance carriers, um, ooh, gosh, I love three. Um, I really love, I really like Rural Neighbors. I really like America, and I really like Liberty Bankers. Um, it's kind of funny. At different times, they've all been my favorite. If I had to choose one right now, we probably do the most with America right now. So there you go. Uh, that's a good question. And I'm not going to say all of them. That's, that's not an answer. Uh, if, if I expect other people to answer my questions when I ask questions, you know, and I, and I ask them again when I don't answer my questions, then I, I, I can't give you guys. I don't know. Uh, Joyce, do you, have to, uh, you do not uh, tax pro on YouTube. Cody, how long have you been doing this? I love the videos. You are closing beast. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, I have been, I've been doing YouTube videos since January, I think January of 2016. I've been running secure agent mentor since with a website and online and all that since January of 2017, about a year and a half ago. And I've been in the insurance business since I was in college, 19, 20 years old. So, uh, and only, only, only reason I feel like I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a closer. Like Ryan said earlier, closers never quit. Uh, reason I feel like I'm a closer, and the reason, reason I get people, I'm great at getting people to say yes. Everyone's great at something, and some people are better at it than others. And some people tell you from the very beginning they're never gonna, they're never gonna give you whatever they want. Um, the fact that you, the fact that you believe them when they say that is is sad. Um, I tell you guys this story all the time. I, uh, it's been a while since I told it. Maybe I, I had a I had a uh, house I was in a few years back, and this was back when I was still in the field, and uh, probably one of my last appointments too that I ever ran. It was awesome. But that they said, hey, we had a problem with our bank about forty years ago. We don't pay with our. Nobody has a routing number, account number. We pay nothing out of our bank account. Um, not even our electric bill, nothing like no one has our information to our bank information ever, never. Um, that one was tough, but I believed that I would walk out of that home with, with a voided check or at least their account information. And I did um, just because I was relentless. I never gave up. Um, and only because the biggest reason is I believed that I was going to make that sale more than they did. That goes back to the whole giving up thing. Agents don't make sales on the first call a lot of times because you don't believe you're going to make it. Like I believe every every appointment can be closed on the first call. I don't think there's a reason to run a second appointment ever. 
Uh, now, should you follow up with your leads at least six to eight times? 100%. What's up, Timothy? But I believe that you should follow up. I believe there's no, there's no, never a reason to do a callback. I mean, the only time you could ever make excuses is like a one-legged appointment. You know, that's tough, but obviously you try to avoid those. Um, but I believe I can close every appointment on the very first call. Uh, I, I don't believe there's ever, you know, I just that's just the way I am. Um, but if you don't believe it, then you'll never be able, to, be able to actually make it a reality. And so that's why it's so ingrained in me to close on the first appointment. But I've gotten sales that 99% of agents would never get simply because I believed it more than the prospect did. What's up, brother? Uh, any other questions? My allergies are driving me nuts tonight. Any other questions about, thanks for watching on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, please share this thing out. If you're on YouTube, keep the thumbs up coming. Thank you so much. And any other questions or comments about uh, why we do what we do, being mentally tough, how to stay, stay strong, and you're welcome, Tommy Mac, um, about Abraham Nation Insurance Conference. We're expecting about 1,500, about 1,500 to 2,000 insurance agents at this conference. Um, we're looking for an additional marketing speaker, someone that has a lot of experience in, in, in marketing in the insurance business. I feel like I do, clearly, but uh, there's a lot of topics and a lot of people, and, and I, I want you guys to learn from a lot of other industry people other than just me. Um, there's... The, the purpose is to bring value. Well, there's other value than just Cody Askins out there. Trust me. Um, Grant Cardone. Dude's going to be there. Ray freaking Lewis, Hall of Fame NFL linebacker, Ray Lewis. Tim Story, the best motivational public speaker in the world. And uh, Coach Michael Burt out of Nashville, Tennessee, uh, Murfreesboro. He's an absolute freak. Uh, praying your allergies get better. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm working. It's it's always in the fall. They like, you know, or towards the fall. They I, my nose starts itching and I start itching and throat starts itching. But dude, hey, we'll get through it, man. I can't give up, right? Uh, Scott, I'm working on coming eight percent nation. I feel it would help me with my craft, dude. I can promise you, it'll help you with your craft. It'll make you a better agent. You'll benefit from it, and we're gonna get to hang out and meet. That sounds like GC Cody. You have to believe it. For it to be your reality, 100% true. That is the case. Thank you, Tax Pro. Uh, Stephen, I think the transition from the intro to the rapport build to the role and purpose is crucial. What's your style? Um, the question I always ask when, when I'm done warming up, 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever, 20 minutes, however long it takes, once, once I feel like the warm-up is there, and if you're struggling in the warm-up, use the Ford method. Family, occupation, recreation, and desires. F-O-R-D. Family, occupation, recreation, and desires. Um, have to run. Very impressive what you're doing, Cody. Keep up the amazing work you're doing. But thank you, brother. You as well, Ryan. Have an awesome night, man. Let's definitely catch, catch up this week. Um, the question I always ask is from the warm-up to the fact find, to transition into the fact find from the warm-up is, hey, what got you thinking about this? It's a great Open, what's up, Leslie? It's a great open-ended question to get them talking because we make sales when they talk more than we do. And like you just asked, uh, Stephen, my style is once I've warmed up successfully, then I'll jump into, hey, what, what, what got you thinking about this? And then kind of open it up, open up the floor, get it moved into the fact-finding portion of the call, of the appointment. You guys are amazing. We're going to go about 454 minutes. I love doing this every single Sunday night with you guys. What other questions do you guys have before, before we wrap this thing up? I don't think I'm going 90 plus minutes tonight, by the way. But you know what? You guys keep asking questions. I mean, You guys are amazing. The topic we've talked about the last 60 minutes has, has been how to stay mentally tough, how to make that extra call, how to, how, to, how to run that extra appointment, how to fight through. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have bad weeks. You're going to have bad months. Don't quit. 92% of insurance agents fail because they quit, and I don't want you to quit. Dave said a, a statement earlier that's going to stick with me for the rest of my life. He said earlier, most people quit five minutes before their miracle. Don't quit. I don't want to see you quit. I want you to fight 
and continue to fight until you dominate. Also, if you're watching on Facebook and YouTube, hit me up on Facebook and Facebook Messenger or in the Secure Agent Mentor group. Um, recommend some female speakers or even some female industry experts that I can talk to about speaking at the 8% Agent Insurance Conference. We really need a couple of really strong female speakers to be there. So help me out. Uh, message me. Um, you guys are awesome. Any questions before we wrap this one up? Stay mentally tough. Don't quit. Make the extra call. Run one more appointment. F keep fighting. It's so difficult to go to that last point when you've had a successful day. Hashtag keep going. Leslie, true. Dude, it's, just, it's hard to go to the last appointment if you've had a successful day or if your day has been absolute garbage and you've heard four no's, right? I mean, it happens to everybody. But hashtag keep going. Any other questions, you guys? You guys are awesome. We do this every, every single Sunday night. I have a blast with all of you. I love every single, every single one of you. And I'm ready to hang out and meet you at the 8% Nation Insurance Conference. Yeah, if you haven't got your ticket, please do so. The tickets are on sale. They'll be going up soon. So make sure you take advantage of that because I want to meet you. 8%Nation.com. I want to hang out. I want to make you a lot of money. I want to guarantee that you're successful as an agent. I want to help you leave a legacy that is that, that freaking echoes forever. You guys are incredible. Have an awesome night. Fight through it. When things get tough, do not give up. Thanks, Timothy. Facebook and YouTube, I'm out. If you're on Facebook, please share. If you're on YouTube, please keep the thumbs up coming. Have an awesome night. I love you guys. See you tomorrow at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Central Time tomorrow for Brain Power with myself and my better half, my wife, Lauren. Have an awesome night. All right, you guys on YouTube, have an incredible night. Appreciate you guys. You are amazing. Go get your ticket.